The question we ask on this Palm Sunday is, what is God's message for us today? As we look at the events and narratives of the first Palm Sunday, we see three important, crucial, key lessons. First, the tears of God on Palm Sunday. To the crowd, it was a joyous carnival. It was an exciting day. There was no social distancing, no self-isolation. On the contrary, they were together, cheering, laughing, singing, rejoicing, celebrating, and welcoming Jesus with palm leaves. To the Jewish people, palm leaves is a nationalistic symbol. And for Jesus to enter into Jerusalem on the first Palm Sunday, there was an Independence Day undertone. There was a hope, a glimmer of it, that this Jesus will redeem Jerusalem and the Jewish people from the hated pagan Roman army under Pontius Pilate. But for Jesus, it was not yet time for celebration. Good Friday had yet to take place. So on Palm Sunday, Jesus was filled with tears and grief and sorrow. The Bible tells us in Luke chapter 19, verse 41, when Jesus was approaching Jerusalem, and when he saw the city of Jerusalem, he wept. If you, even you, had only known on this day, Jesus said, you would, what who would bring you peace? But now it is hidden from your eyes. The crowd, the people, have been blinded by a group of selfish, self-centered, institutional, legalistic, religious authorities whose main interest was self-preservation and not the spiritual welfare and well-being of their flock. Jesus had described them as hypocrites, blind guides, whitewashed tombs, brood of vipers, and even murderers. O oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, the city that kills the prophets and stones, God's messengers. How often I have wanted to gather your children together as a hand protects her cheeks beneath her wings, but you wouldn't let me. So on the first Palm Sunday, the palms that ushered him into Jerusalem were palms, figuratively speaking, palms soaked with the tears of God for a people blinded and hindered by their religious teachers. Jesus forewarned them, judgment is coming because you did not recognize the time of God's coming to you. Luke chapter 19 verse 44. Repentance and turning to God and welcoming God's Son was never found in the lips of the Pharisees. Only rejection. They were supposed to be God's shepherd and messenger, but they neglected their actual responsibilities. To the extent that they even allowed the house of God, the temple of God, to become a den of robbers. They neglected the important, God's importance. What about us who are believers? Is God pleased with our steadfast obedience and love for Him? Or is He, like on the first Palm Sunday, weeping over our frequent insincerity and hypocrisy? and our terrible busyness that unfortunately has nothing to do with him. We can hold palm crosses celebrating, rejoicing, praying and singing aloud, but is the Lord pleased with our innermost being and our lives? Perhaps 
the words of Jesus to Martha in Martha and Mary's home is relevant. Martha, Martha, and many of us as well. You are worried and upset about many things, but few things are needed, or indeed only one. Mary has chosen what is better. So choose life, choose God. So the first lesson we learn is that the tears of God on Palm Sunday truly demonstrated, demonstrates His heart and His love for the people, for you and I. And He still loves us very much. Secondly, let's look at the acclamations on the, on, on the first Palm Sunday. Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna means save us. Son of David is a messianic term referring to Jesus. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord is an honorary uh, welcome to the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest, it means, and it refers to God who lives in the highest of the highest heaven. Put these four phrases together, it means this, save us, son of David, save us, Messiah, the anointed one, save us, you who come to us in the name of the Lord, save us, you who live in the highest of the highest heaven, come, save us. And Jesus, which means Savior, Christ, which means Anointed One, the Messiah, came to seek and to save the lost. These acclamations are theologically sound and beautifully, beautiful prayers and praises. And God has ensured that these acclamations of who Jesus actually is are preserved in the Bible. But the question for us is, save us from what? What do you want to be saved from? What is the most important thing that you want to be saved into? For the crowd at Palm Sunday, they would like to be saved from the troubles of the day, from the Romans, from the Jewish authorities, from physical illnesses and afflictions, injustices, hunger, and even death, and save us from the spiritual side as well, demons and unclean spirits and powers of darkness, Jesus had come to save and to deliver. But the Savior who came to save them, within one week, they crucified him, to be exact five days on the fifth day. Sometimes we may have rich and theologically sound prayer phrases and great Bible knowledge and skills and experiences too. But when it comes to our own Good Friday, our day of greatest trouble and testing and pain, will you still remain faithful to Him unto death? Will you still remain faithful to Him who came to save you? Our faith in Christ must never ever be a fickle-minded, flip-flop faith like the crowd on the first Palm Sunday. Our faith and trust in Christ must be deeply grounded in God, in His loving Word, in our hearts, in our lives, that it will always be steadfast and strong, in season and out of season, in good times, bad times, all the times, in trials, troubles, and tribulations, let our faith persevere today until the end of our lives. Finally, look at Jesus. He showed up on Palm Sunday. What if he didn't show up? What would be the repercussions for us? Palm Sunday is the beginning of the last battle, culminated on Good Friday and victory fully declared on Easter morning. 
But the war against the devil and the evil powers of darkness started earlier with the incarnation of Christ at Christmas. Jesus turned up on Palm Sunday as king. Unlike human kings, he turned up riding on a slow, humble donkey. He turned up as one who comes in the name of the Lord, bringing us peace on earth, goodwill to all men and women. He showed up despite knowing that a fickle-minded crowd will turn him from the cheers of Palm Sunday to the crucifixion of Good Friday. He knew he was going to die, and yet he turned up. He showed up. God will never leave you nor forsake you. He will show up. He will show up and walk with you, especially when you are through, walking through the valley of the shadow of death, of pain, of darkness. He will show up. Thrust him as your shepherd and Lord. On this Palm Sunday, and trust your whole life into the palms of God, in the palms of His love, security, and peace. And remember to thank Him and your life to serve Him always until the end. Let me end up with a prayer as found in 3 John chapter 1, verse 2. I pray that you may enjoy good health and that all may go well with you, even as your soul is getting along well. So may God, who came into Jerusalem on the first Palm Sunday, grant you and all your dear ones His holy presence, His perfect peace, and His powerful protection. May Palm Sunday be meaningful to you. Let us give thanks to God always serve him in Jesus name.